Uh, hi everyone, I'm Yuan Wei. I'm from the University of Queensland and I'm here to present my work, Unified Question Generation with Continual Life Learning. So this work is cooperated with uh, Ying Hongzhi, Tie Ke, and uh, Chen Tong, Chou Feng, and Li Zhen. So before I present my work, I would like to first introduce the concept of question generation because our work is about QG. So question generation uh, actually is a dual task of question answering and it aims to create uh, quite, uh, grammatically and semantically precise questions according to the given text. So as you can see in this figure, uh, we give the model context and answers. Our model can generate uh, questions and this question can be answered by a given answer and uh, based on the context. So uh, QG has many uh, real life applications, like it can generate frequent asked questions for websites and it can create quiz for education materials. It can also guide dialogue, for example, in task oriented dialogue system, uh, the system usually grasps uh, users intent through asking questions. So we can generate such questions. And it can also be an augmentation techniques for question answering to augment QA data sets. So uh, here we have many QG formats like uh, answer extraction QG, answer abstraction QG, multi-choice QG, and the Boolean QG. So uh, answer extraction QG means that uh, uh, the answer is the, the answer must be a subspan of uh, the given context and answer abstraction QG that doesn't have such requirement. The answer can be any novel words. Uh, multi-choice QG is a quiz style QG and the Boolean QG require the answer be the uh, be yes or no. So we can say that uh, different Q QG formats have different components and uh, they have different requirements for each component. Besides the variants of QG formats, we have uh, many datasets, QG datasets. And you know, since QG is a dual task of QA, so theoretically we can use any QA datasets uh, as our QG datasets, like Scoder, MS Marco, Narrative QA, and uh, Lecture. So however, current uh, QG models have many lim limitations. First is that uh, they are dedicated to specific QG formats. That is to say uh, that uh, if the QG model is designed for question uh, for answer extraction QG, it cannot handle answer abstraction QG problem because you know uh, for example for answer extraction QG the answer is a subspan of passage so maybe we just need one encoder and we just give the encoder some uh, specific tokens to indicate which part is the answers. However, for answer abstraction QG, we, the answer is not a subspan of passage. It can be any words. So we, we need at least two encoders, right? So we cannot use the answer extraction QG to, uh, to, to handle uh, answer abstraction QG. And uh, for multi-choice QG, we have distractors. And uh, this distractor uh, doesn't exist in any other QG formats. For Boolean QG, the answer is yes or no. So maybe we cannot use LSTM or transformer to uh, encode these answers, right? Because we only have one word for the answer. Another limitation for current QG model is that they can only achieve uh, optimal performance on the data sets that they were trained on. So that is to say, if you train a QG, QG on Scorder, you cannot generate uh, good questions on MS Marker or narrative QA. However, we argue that the boundaries for QG formats and the datasets are artificial and uh, perhaps unnecessary because the underlying context understanding ability and the question construction, constructing knowledge are largely common. So uh, we here we decide to explore to construct a unified QG with, uh, which can generate questions across both datasets and the formats. To achieve this goal, we have to do two things. First is uh, we need to we need a mechanism to unify QG formats. And another thing we need to do is uh, find a method to train on multiple data sets. So for, for the first uh, uh, thing, we 
we in, we should we can use text in text out mechanism, which is very uh, commonly used in recent years. And other, uh, to achieve the second goal, we have many methods. First, we can use multitask learning. However, if you use multitask learning, every time you want to learn a new QG dataset, you have to retrain on all datasets. So the cost of learning is, uh, is very cost. Uh, it, it's not affordable. So for another method is use lifelong learning. Life learning is efficient. However, it always suffers catastrophic forgetting. So if you want to use life learning, you have to um, address a catastrophic forgetting. Uh, here we decide to use life learning because life learning can keep models generalization ability even they are trained. So this is the overview of our uh, methods. We have a unified QG encoding to unify QG formats. And then we have a QG model based on T5. We also uh, present Strider, which contains two parts, difficult example replay and similarity regularization to uh, train QG model on multiple data sets to alleviate catastrophic forgetting. So, uh, First, let me introduce unified QG encoding. It's very simple, but uh, uh, effective. We just inspired by text in text out mechanism. We find that although different QG formats have uh, different components, but all these components are strings. So maybe we can just concatenate them with some uh, specific prefix. So here uh, in the right picture, you can see that there are some examples we concatenate uh, this four QG formats into a single paragraph. So we don't need to uh, design different encoders for these different QG formats. Uh, our QG model is based on T5, which is a very popular large pre-trained language model. It has an encoder and decoder. The encoder is a pile of stacked transformer blocks, which contains two uh, neural structures, a multi-head self-attention and a position-wise feedforward network. Uh, the structure of decoder is much similar to encoder, except that it has causal attention to alleviate uh, information leaking. Uh, the third part of our method is Strider. Strider has two components, difficult example replay and uh, similarity regularization. Here, we first present difficult example replay. So the idea of difficult example replay is that uh, we can retain a small set of examples from past uh, training data and replay them in later training tasks so that we can alleviate uh, forgetting. So the key thing here is how to choose these examples. Here, we decide to choose difficult examples. Uh, because we think difficult training examples are more informative and helpful for improving the current model because this model uh, doesn't know where in this difficult example in current data sets. So maybe in the future, they will first forget these examples. Uh, how to define this difficulty things? Uh, here we just use laws normalized by the question lines to define difficult because we find that the longer the question is, uh, the larger the loss, but we don't want question as be the only reason for difficult. So we just normalize this next. Another thing is similarity based adaptive regularization. Uh, we use this thing because we find that uh, the size of example sets is very small. So only relying on this example replay is not enough. So here we have an extra regularization method. So this method is based on EWC, which is a very uh, famous lifelong learning techniques. And as you can see here, Lambda is actually, uh, in original EWC, Lambda is the uh, manual, can be manually defined because it's hyperparameter. But here in QG, we observe that uh, similarities among datasets are very different. For example, uh, the for answer extraction QG datasets like Scorter, it must be uh, similar to another answer extraction QG datasets like uh, MS Marker, but and it also similar to answer abstraction QG. However, for, uh, it will be much dissimilar to multi-choice QG. 
So the similarity is very different. So here uh, we, we think that a model will need less parameter updates on this set that is similar to previous data than on the this similar one. So here we, uh, we, we define lambda's value based on the data set similarity calculated by TF-IDF, which is parameter free. Uh, our experiments is conducted on eight data sets with four popular formats. And uh, we assume that each data set arrives in the following order based on the data set released date. So we use uh, blue 124 material Rogel as the automatic matrix. And uh, we apply MC and M first to evaluate lifelong learning ability. Uh, since no of existing QG models have created questions across data sets and uh, formats since they are dedicated for specific tasks. We here, we use three baselines, multitask QG, which is T5 trend in multitask learning way and the fine tuned QG, which is transfer, uh, learned in transfer learning way. And the random select QG selects uh, examples randomly rather than using the difficulty. And uh, yeah, he, here is overview, uh, overall evaluation. So you can say under uh, I'm, I'm seeing our model is outperforms, only underperforms than multitask learning, but outperforms all other baselines. Uh, for the M first, our model is outperforms all other baselines. And if you, uh, you, if you look at figure five, you can see, although our model uh, underperform uh, much task learning, but uh, actually after the fourth task, our model uh, is actually outperform all other baselines. We also evaluate the final model on audit sets. And as you can see, our mo uh, final, final model of our uh, unified QG is outperforms all other uh, baselines, uh, except on race. We, our model underperform multitask learning. We also uh, compare our unified QG with dedicated QG. Dedicated QG means uh, the QG model trend for specific data sets. So as you can see in the right table, our unified QG outperforms on five QG data sets. And uh, we also do ablation studies to show that uh, every components are effective. So here is our contribution. We propose unified QG to continually learn question generation across data sets and formats. And uh, yeah, this is the first time to address the generalization issues of QG models by using, uh, Q by using lifelong learning. And uh, we also propose a uh, unified QG encoding mechanisms and uh, striders to uh, address the catastrophe forgetting problem. We also conduct ex experiments to show the effectiveness of our proposed methods. So uh, th this is a very brief introduction of our work. And if you are interested in our paper, please uh, refer uh, to please to uh, just read our paper for more details. And uh, thank you very much for your listening and your time. This is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very, very much uh, for the nice presentation and keeping time. So we have uh, now three minutes for questions. Is there mm -hmm. any question from, from the audience or maybe on some of the channels of the conference? Yeah, please, Alexander. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. I had a, one question. Uh, have you considered somehow to enhance your approach with knowledge graphs? Because as you might know that knowledge graphs already have this subject subject predicate object structure that uh, corresponds to simple questions. Maybe there are some approaches how to combine um, neural networks with knowledge graphs in this regard. Yeah, I, I see that uh, uh, knowledge, knowledge graph based question generation is another topic. And uh, yeah, it's a, also a very interesting topic, but in our work, we only consider textual QG, that means all the input are text. 
Yeah, but the uh, KG based QG is also a very uh, interesting topic. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks for the information. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? From somebody else? Um, no, so I also have a, a question actually. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. too much uh, an expert in this area, but currently one issue that, that we have um, with all the distance learning and, and so on is the, the generation of multiple choice exam questions for, for students. And I think these techniques that you develop would be really excellent <laughs> just to yeah. you know, feed in your textbook and get a, a, a number of multiple choice questions. So I was wondering, if these techniques were uh, applied in this education area at yeah, all? Yeah, uh, uh, definitely, yeah, de definitely. Uh, of course, uh, one of the most very interesting application of QG is to generate education materials such as mm -hmm. uh, reading comprehension or quiz, right? And um, yeah, there are some papers uh, to do these things, yeah. I, I know there are some papers do these things. Mm -hmm. But is this just at the paper level or is this actually something that one can use in uh, practice? Because there's always a yeah. gap, right? Between <laughs> what we yeah. publish and what can be used. Uh, I, I don't know, it's out of my knowledge, but uh, I see some papers do these things, but uh, I haven't do investigation on, you know, if there is a uh, real life, applications based on QG to generate uh, education materials. Uh, I haven't uh, noticed that, that, but I just uh, I, I read some paper and uh, they claim that they can generate uh, education materials using neural network based QG. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I will I will have to look into that, I think, with the number of students yeah, yeah. we have to test online. Okay, yeah. Wei, thank you. Uh, thank you.